Reveal the Deep. It's a spooky game because October just started and it's a game that I wanted to uh, play for a long time now. It's been in my list for a while because it's really great in my opinion and underrated. I think more people should uh, know of it, should, should know it, should know about it. Not sure what the right uh, phrase is, but I think it should be more famous, I guess. Uh, yeah, I think it's really underrated. And so that's about it. Let's let's start, right? It's a quite a short game. There's only three chapters. Uh, that are about one hour each to play. But yeah, you will see this game is um, a lot similar to Amnesia: The Dark Descent. Um, it works kind of similarly, like there's an emphasis in the gameplay on, on light and things that you can see and things that you cannot see. It's spooky, you're alone in a remote place, and uh, the time period is similar, I would say. Amnesia technically takes time, uh, takes place in 1834. This game takes place in 1901, I think, so it's not exactly the same time. But you will see lots of similarities, but in my opinion, this game is spookier than um, Amnesia, the Dark Descent. So as you can see, if your light is turned on or off, the world changes. That's really a great mechanism, I think. And when you put, pop your leg back on, and that's how you um, solve the uh, puzzles, I guess. I mean, Amnesia was heavy on the puzzles too. Um, oh, stupid. And also I'm gonna shut up a lot of the time because the audio in this game, the soundscape, the there's no no music per se, but the sound effects are really really great. And uh, if you can listen with a um, thing headphones, uh, it's probably better. I hope that uh, my mechanical keyboard is not too loud in the mic. I try to shield it, but uh, see the little details in the background? That's nice. The octopus and the shark. Anyway, how do I open this? Like this. Yeah. It's not really puzzles, it's not really exploration, it's, it's kind of both actually. Puzzle exploration, horror, it's spooky. So yeah, it's really like Amnesia, except it's in 2D pixel art. And uh, in my opinion, scarier, but that's just, you know, my opinion. Nothing to see here. Oh. I haven't played this game in, in 
two or three years, so I forgot everything, but... Yep. What's going on? So I got the key to something. What now? Huh. off. Ah, this game is so cool. I didn't remember that, that this puzzle started right in the, at the beginning of the game. But immediately they do it, that's really cool. Some would say it's a Metroid-like game, except you don't shoot anything, of course. you got these journals. Beatrice's Diary. 28th of May, 1901. So the story is really simple. You're uh, this, not exactly a scuba diver, but you know, a diver um, that's uh, gonna go on this boat, that is on a, a boat that sunk to uh, investigate why it's at the bottom of the sea. That's about it. The rest is revealed, but intended throughout the game. Beatrice's Diary, 28th of May, 1901. I saw something moving on one of the lower decks. It looked like black mud. The air around it felt bitter and primal. It moved on its own, feeling its way across the wooden floor. I felt terribly ill and fled to the upper decks. When I returned with the others, the corridor was gone. It was as if it was written out of the ship's blueprints. So that's... Uh so the, the journals are, are basically, um, how do you say, optional, if I remember correctly. You don't really have to read them. It's like in Deus Ex, you know. Uh, they're basically here to uh, provide story and background and uh, flavor to the game. Here's another one. Thomas Expedition Log. The boat we are going to be traveling on is monstrous. Maybe you could say it's Titanic. 17th of May 1901. SS Eurydice. The professor says we're being joined by a lady called Beatrice. 
I can't remember her surname. The professor never could refuse a damsel in distress. Yeah. It's a reasonable amount. Beatrice's Diary, 19th of May, 1901. I shall miss Singapore, though I look forward to telling Timothy and Emma one of my wonderful travels. Amidst the business of loading that enormous crate onto the boat, Professor Crook still found time to invite me to dine with himself and some of the crew. At dinner, I met a rather frightening man named Isaac. His presence seemed to fill the room. I was able to enjoy the meal thoroughly, thanks to Tom telling me all about the island which they discovered. Apparently, it is home to a long-dead civilization. The explorers are bringing back artifacts to England. What could possibly go wrong? <coughs> Still lost, though. 